Hey everyone! On today's video, I'm going to share several spring-inspired home decor DIYs. I think they all came out adorable and I can't wait to share it with you. For the first DIY, I'm going to use this Buffalo Check Bunny Garland that I got from Dollar Tree. There are about six bunnies on it and I'm going to cut out and use three of them. I turn them over and remove the staples on the back. I'm going to wrap the bunnies in jute cord and I'm going to hot glue that on there. I make sure to leave about 6 or 7 inches in the end which I will come back to when I am done to wrap up and close up the bottom. So I apply the glue and I wrap the cord around while pushing it down to make sure there aren't any spaces. When I get to the base of the ears, I wrap them one at a time and when I get to the top, I snip off the cord. And then I wrap the other one starting at the back. I do look at it to see which side I prefer and that side will be the front. So I just continue wrapping until I get to the top and then I snip off the cord. After that, I finish off the bottom like so. Then I wrap the other two. I'm going to glue the bunnies on this one foot by one and a half inch wood. You can get these at Dollar Tree or any craft store, but definitely a whole lot cheaper if you get them at a hardware store like Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm going to paint the wood in this gorgeous blue chalk paint from Waverly and I want to lighten it up so I add a little white to it and then I mix it up. I brush that on with a chalk paintbrush and it goes on beautifully. This shade of blue will add a vintage element to the decor. I'll also need three tumbling tower blocks which I paint blue as well and this is what's going to hold up and support the bunnies. I want to distress the wood. So with a coarsely grit sandpaper, I give it a light sanding focusing mainly on the edges. With a ruler, I mark where the bunnies are going to be placed, making sure they are evenly spaced out. I also lay out the bunnies like so and that gives me an idea of how it's going to look when it's glued. I glue them in place. I apply hot glue on the tumbling block and on the bottom of the bunny. And I am done. Absolutely adorable. It's perfect for spring and I love the combination of the blue and the jute cord. I just love how it turned out. For the next DIY, I'm going to use this Easter wooden craft kit. It comes with two wooden eggs, two wood planks from this pack, and about 18 tumbling tower blocks, all of which I got at Dollar Tree. The first thing I'm going to do is paint the wooden eggs, and I wanted to see if the black design would come off with sanding, but it did not, although it did dull out the color a bit. I still had a little bit of paint left over from DIY number one and I loved it so much that I also wanted to use it for this one as well. So I add a little more of the blue and the white and I mix them together. So I brush it on with a foam brush and because I'm using chalk paint, the coverage is very opaque. It goes on thick and covers the design underneath very well. I'm going to glue four blocks together like so to form a C or a U and I make two sets. Then I apply glue on the sides like so and I place a plank on that side making sure the blocks are glued all the way out to the edge of the planks. 
I do the same thing on the other side, apply glue on the blocks, and glue another plank in place. And to make support for the base, I'm going to glue down three blocks on each inner side of the planks. I want this to be elevated, so I turn it over and glue down four blocks on the corners like so. To make sure the blocks are not going to buckle, I glue four craft cubes right next to them for extra support. I'm going to add some color using Waverly Antique Wax. And I don't want it to go on too dark, so I apply it with a very, very damp cloth. To make the base, I'm going to measure and cut two planks to fit inside, and I just use a miter box and saw to trim them down. Then I stain them with Waverly Antique Wax as well, and once that is dried, I glue them down. I want to add a little bit of gold to the blue, so with a foam brush, I dab some gold on the edge. I start off light and I just keep building it up until I'm satisfied with the way it looks. I also add a little here and there on the surface as well. I glue one of the extra buffalo check bunny that I used from DIY number one in the center. Initially, these were going to be glued on the sides, but then I ended up liking the way it looked in the front instead. So for the sides, I decided to use two giant popsicle sticks. I measure and trim them to fit. I paint them with metallic gold acrylic paint to match the gold that I used around the wood. Then I glue them to the height of the tumbling block. And finally, I glue the wooden eggs in place. You can certainly place a bunny on the other side as well, but I just wanted to keep this one-sided. I clamp it in place, and once it's dried, I am done! Wow, I love how this flower box turned out. It has a touch of rustic and vintage elements to it. I just love it. For the final DIY, I'm going to make some textured Easter eggs using this pack of plastic eggs from Dollar Tree. I didn't want to buy any more paint because I knew I had a lot, so I went through what I had and I wanted the shades to be muted or pastel shades and as long as I had white paint, I knew I could easily lighten up any color. For the first one, I'm going to use this pretty pink color from Apple Barrel. It's called Cameo Pink, and to thicken it up, I add some baking soda, and I mix that up. And to thicken it up even more, I add some spackle to the mixture. When this mixture dries, it will leave a beautiful texture that looks like concrete. I lightly sand the plastic so that the paint will adhere better, and then I apply a little hot glue on the rim to seal it shut. I also snip off that little plastic hinge. Now some of the eggs don't have a hole in it to stick a skewer through it, like this one, so I stuck a needle on this one instead, which I kind of preferred so that you don't have to worry about covering it up later, or you can certainly make that hole bigger to fit a skewer right through it. So with a foam brush, I paint on the mixture, and I will be painting this on thick, and once I am done, you will not be able to tell that this was a plastic Easter egg. I am going to paint two coats of the mixture, or at least touch up any areas needed after the first coat, so I let it dry between coats. Now to expedite drying time, use a heat gun, or if you don't have one, you can also use a blow dryer. Next, I do the same process for this gorgeous yellow chalk paint from Waverly. I mix in the baking soda and the spackle. This plastic egg had a hole on the bottom and top, so I was able to stick a skewer right through it. To cover up the hole, I did have to put a little spackle over it and then paint right over it. The mixture just could not cover it up. It just kept falling in. Such a pretty color. I make another mixture with a shade of gray from Apple Barrel, 
I really like this color because it made the plastic egg look like concrete when it dried. Now I did like the coarseness of it when it dried, but you can also lightly sand it for a smoother texture. That's pretty much it for this one. It's my little hack for making Easter eggs look like concrete. I think these all came out so pretty. You can definitely display these in a basket or that adorable wooden box from DIY number two. It definitely adds a beautiful touch of spring to your home. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.